In today's video, we will be discussing five cybersecurity interview questions. But before we do, just a quick disclaimer. These questions are not guaranteed to be asked at your interview. I've pulled all of today's questions and answers from our website, mockquestions.com, where we brought in nearly 100 different professional interviewers to create all of our interview questions and answer examples. So in this video, we will dive into what I believe are our five best cybersecurity interview questions with answer examples. Let's get started. Question one, how do you protect connected mobile devices on your network from cyber attacks? The use of mobile and connected devices is becoming a way of life in the corporate world. Network systems and cybersecurity engineers have to be on the defensive when it comes to mobile and connected devices that enter their workplace. They don't know if a smartphone, for example, has a malicious app on an employee's phone, and if by unknowingly having that can compromise their networks or systems. This is a question that an interviewer will likely ask. They may go as far as asking what kind of setup you have at home for your connected devices. The reason a hiring manager will ask this is to see how well protected you are at home and if you apply these same practices and principles at work. It's important that you are aware of the types of attacks that can occur on mobile and connected devices. Here's an answer example from our website. Since I also have a mobile phone and several connected devices at home and work, I do take extra precautions to make sure that what I load on my phone and device is safe and virus free. I do this by researching the software or app before downloading it. I'm also careful not to grant app permissions to access functions on my mobile device either. In my current role, I take steps necessary to safeguard mobile devices and users against attacks. I've developed a checklist that I share with our employees to make sure they follow safe practices. Here's an example of my list. Use strong, unique passwords. Add antivirus software to devices. Review app permissions before giving access. Use two-step multi-factor authentication. Keep your software up to date on a regular basis. Disable features you may not use. Question two, do you have a cybersecurity incident response plan? First of all, all companies should have a cybersecurity incident response plan. If you've worked in information security for any amount of time, you should be familiar with incident response. The makeup of an incident response plan will probably include the following components. A, an incident response team, and B, a workforce continuity plan, and C, a summary or inventory of tools and technologies within the environment. It's fair to say that an interviewer will likely want to know what part of the incident response plan you are responsible for if a cyber attack were to happen, or if a critical security event has been detected. Give some thought as to how you would respond to this question. I suggest you give the interviewer some insight into how the plan was developed, and if you had any involvement or input in putting the plan together. This tells the interviewer that you were an instrumental part of the planning process from the planning to the execution of this plan. At my current company, I was intimately involved in the development of our cybersecurity incident response plan. I was responsible for overseeing the planning strategy as well as the operational and tactical execution of the incident response plan. As per our company policy, we followed the NIST, Computer Security Incident Handling Guide. Here's a breakdown of the structure of the plan that I helped develop. One, detection and analysis includes everything from monitoring potential attacks to looking for signs of an incident. Two, train staff on detection, containment, eradication, and recovery. 3. Identifying the source of potential attacks. 4. Containment and recovery. This involves disabling network systems, access and installing security patches to resolve vulnerabilities. 5. Assess the damage. Question 3. Which user applications have you found are most susceptible to being hacked? If you were to look at data going back to the last 10 years, you'll find that a majority of applications that were hacked are in the banking and finance industry. This is important to note because if the employment prospect that you are applying to is in this industry, you'll likely be asked this question. Answering this question with knowledge about what types of applications will get hacked the most will help the interviewer understand the depth of your knowledge on this subject. A good way to start answering these types of questions is to give examples of recent hacks that have happened in the industry of the company you are interviewing with. To really show your knowledge on this topic, 
Give the interviewer a brief on what industries made changes that were implemented to avoid this from happening again. It's been my experience that the banking and finance industry has been especially targeted by hackers the most. One of the biggest reasons is obviously financial gain. Hackers seem to find vulnerabilities within banking apps and exploit them. It's estimated that 85% of web apps that are tested have flaws that hackers were able to penetrate. Using apps on your mobile phone can be risky, especially if you do any sort of financial transactions. As a company policy, we have implemented two-factor authentication for all our users. This has helped reduce hacking attempts within our corporate environment significantly. We also encourage our users to update their devices on a weekly basis too. Question four, can you tell me the difference between coding, encryption, and hashing, and why they are important? Let's begin with what coding, encryption, and hashing means and their importance to IT security. Encoding. To encode something that is to communicate a message in a way that the receiver will clearly understand. Hashing is an integrity method to validate data. Encryption is making data unreadable by anyone except those who know the secret shared key. Being able to tell the difference between coding, encryption, and hashing is very important if you want to get past a first round interview. This is a common question used to weed out junior level IT security candidates. All three are important to enable security at every level. I have a thorough understanding of encoding, hashing, and encryption. I know that with encoding, I need to be mindful of the standards that are used for the receiver and sender since every receiver will not support the same standards. For hashing, my main purpose is to secure the storage of passwords. As far as encryption, I like to make sure that whomever I send an encrypted message to has the capability and secret key to decrypt my message. This is a safe and secure way to communicate with others who are the intended party to your message. Question five, what is the difference between ECB and CBC in an IT security environment? Let's start with what these two entities mean. ECB, electronic code book, is basically raw cipher. You have a block that needs to be encrypted as an output. If you don't encrypt the block, it might show up as ciphertext. CBC, cipher block chaining, essentially is an initialization vector. It converts plain text to ciphertext. These methods of operational configuration allow those ciphers to work with large data streams without the risk of compromising security. Essentially what the hiring manager wants to know is if you understand the differences between ECB and CBC. They'll ask questions similar to, are ciphertext blocks decrypted separately? Or is it possible to encrypt and decrypt simultaneous threads? Other questions that may come up are, how can an image be encrypted? And what's the standard protocol to do so? Or perhaps, what's the difference between ciphertext and plain text? Anytime that I need to encrypt blocks of data in ECB mode, I can always use many threads simultaneously but I always encrypt plain text blocks separately for security purposes. The difference between the two is that with CBC, I need to add XOR to each plain text block to the block that was previously produced. With EBC, it's the simplest mode of encryption. The result is then encrypted using a cipher algorithm in the usual way. CBC is a little different because the initialization vector needs to be created randomly by the sender. Thank you for watching. If you want to view all of our cybersecurity interview questions and answer examples, head over to mockquestions.com today and get started. We hope this video helped you today. If you want to practice all of our interview questions and answers, head over to mockquestions.com today and get started.